Hey everyone, this is Darkfire Slide, back with another part of our Europa Universalis 4 introductory campaign where we learn more about the game and basic concepts and everything expanding all the way up to advanced strategies later on in the series. Um, for now, we have begun our war with Aragon in earnest and I have quite frankly defeated their forces uh, quite decisively, I would say. We're going to unpause the game and continue to let things progress. England is asking for military access once again. Uh, I don't see a reason for it, so we're just going to ignore it and let it auto-decline. Austria declared war on Bohemia. It's unfortunate for Bohemia. And these sieges are progressing. You know, we talked about how that works last episode. Now, if you... I believe... This may be an Art of War expansion specific feature, but if you're midway through a war and your ally didn't answer your original call to arms, you can uh, open diplomacy with them, look under alliance actions, and there will be a call to arms action. And it'll tell you, you know, like with most other things in this game, the tooltip will tell you yes, no, and, you know, why. So, Portugal's not going to join us because um, they like our enemies and. Uh, they're fighting another war, and accepting would destabilize them. It's just, it's just a mess for them, really. Request for military access from the Papal State. Who is attacking Urbino. Again, I don't see a need to do it, so why do it? On the other hand, if you want to be a nice person and just give everybody military access, there's no reason to, but it's not really something to worry about. And while you're... But while you're doing sieges... Um, which, you know, admittedly cannot be the most exciting. You know, not nearly as exciting as the actual battles. Um, while you're doing sieges, you just, you know, keep your eye out on the horizon. Make sure you're not about to get, you know, ganked or sneak attacked or what have you. Alright, so, we've just taken our first province. Um, when the siege finally rolls and the province becomes yours, um, you don't actually own this yet. So, you may be wondering... You know, how, how do we actually take territory? Well, to do that, we would have to open diplomacy with uh, the nation we're fighting. And generally speaking, um, you have to open... Yeah, generally speaking, you have to open diplomacy with the actual um, instigator of the war. So, um, for example, say Portugal were to join us in this war. Um, they couldn't negotiate a separate, like, peace if they wanted to, with Navarra, because Navarra is a completely, it's a, it's a junior partner in the war. And it's, it's funky how that can work sometimes, and it brings into question the idea of a co-belligerent in a war. You know, that, that is to say that if you are a co-belligerent, you can call on your own allies into the war, but if you're not a co-belligerent, which is, you know, 90% of the time, I would say, um, you cannot call on your own allies, and you really can't make all that many demands for yourself, um, except with the actual, like, instigator of the war, whether you're on the offensive or defensive side. It makes more sense when you're the one actually doing it, but since we're the instigator of this war, we are in complete control of the diplomacy options, especially since we're the only one on our side of the alliance. Now, here's the thing. We open our terrain map mode back up, all of this is plains, a uh, coastline. There are mountains up here, which suck to attack in, as we've mentioned before, especially if we cross a river. Um, generally speaking, the rivers are fairly accurate. If you, if it looks like your troops are going to cross a river, it's you're probably going to cross a river. You know, there are very few instances where that isn't true. So, that being said, um, the Aragonese and Navarran army is now in Soria, and they're at negative 42% to taking that province. So, you know, that's that's still a good amount of time that they have left on that. So what are we going to do? Rather than trying to fight them there, we'll let them take that province, because that... Let's see. Let's look. This province is a three base tax. Now, we were talking earlier about how base tax is important. Well, in wars, if you look at a province's base tax, uh, the higher the base tax, the higher the province itself is going to be worth. And the reason for that is because when you take a province you get some of its uh, income as your own under the spoils of war category, as we can see here in our income list, uh, right below our gold income. And, and gold means that we actually own a gold mine somewhere. So, 
We must have one in one of our provinces. Um, let me check something real quick. Okay. Have, having gold gives you inflation, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, so it's both a blessing and a curse. But anyway, we're going to move our troops into Barcelona, rather than try to combat them in the hills where they have a defensive bonus. Because in the end, that would just cause us to lose troops. And that would be bad. Um... Our king uh, messed up, and so now we lose a stability point, which means we have to go into our government tab, go into stability and expansion, and uh, we always want to keep our stability at at least zero, if not at one, if you want to make sure that your country is stable, because um, if you have negative one stability, um, random events will pop up, and, you know, they're more likely to pop up, um, that will cause, like, even if rebels are not at a high percentage to pop up in your country. If your stability is below one, then, you know, they can still pop up randomly. And it looks like a disaster is about to start here, and we'll talk about that after the war because that will become very relevant to us, perhaps. But anyway, we're going to boost stability back up to zero, so we're not taking a penalty to unrest and things of that nature. Now, because the base tax of this, these provinces is so high, you know, we've got 13 right here, we've got, I believe, yeah, 8 right here, and 7 right here. Um, base tax also affects how hard it is to blockade a port. So, rather than getting the not blockaded bonus on this province, we still have to suffer it. And as you can see, it's it's a minus 2 for not, being able, for not having the port blockaded. So, you know, that's unfortunate for us. But, for the time being, if we take Valencia, you know, there's a strong possibility that we'll be able to uh, deal with that and besiege their provinces faster. Now, as we learned earlier, Barcelona is their capital, and we're going to take a look here at our war screen, this little button down here. And there's things you, know, you should know when you're trying to negotiate um, peace and war and everything. Now... There are a couple of stats. Um, there's war enthusiasm, which is like how much your country wants to go to war. It's not really as relevant for a player um, as it is for the AI. Because that's going to determine their willingness to accept deals and even accept unfair deals. Um, but that's, you know, it's, it's kind of like the opinion stat versus the, uh, you know, actual, like, country uh, opinion stat. Uh, you know, the, the numbers versus the attitude. Um, next, and this is more important for us, uh, is war exhaustion. Here we can see the comparative war exhaustion, um, which, as we kind of mentioned before, um, war exhaustion has a direct impact on unrest. So, because we have 1.64 war exhaustion, we are going to have plus 1.6 war exhaustion. And if national unrest is positive, that means it starts adding penalties. Now, how do you get rid of war exhaustion? Well, one, stop being at war. Um, for every month that you're not at war, it goes down by 0.1. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know, it takes time for people to recover from it. Um, there are certain ideas that reduce the effects of war exhaustion and lower the cost of reducing it. But if you're in a pinch and you really need to uh, reduce it, you can always spend 75 diplomatic power to do that. But we're only at 1.6. Really, you don't need to worry too much about war exhaustion until it starts hitting the, I'd say between 5 and 6 threshold is when you should start noticing it, because that's when it's really going to start affecting your country. You know, especially in terms of, like, rebellions and things of that nature. Now, uh, last on the screen is the amount of stability that the country has, um, as well as the blockade percentage, which can which can affect things depending on how big the country is. Um, as well, you can see the comparative amount of troops here. Now, they do have more troops, but they're cut off, you know, because a lot of these are Burgundy's troops, um, I would imagine, and Urbino and Naples, who are uh, locked in a conflict. Um, anyway, um, remember how we were talking about how Aragon is the war goal? Well, here we can see that um, we have the this green arrow here, and that means that the war score is ticking in our favor. So because we hold Aragon, every month it's going to tick by 0.4 uh, war score, and that's 
uh, percentage. So we can get 23.8 more war score, or basically 23% more war score, uh, by achieving the war goal. 100% means that you have completely beaten them, and that you can consider things like, you know, full annexation, um, among other things. Now, if we open diplomacy and go to sue for peace, um, how we take provinces in Europa Universalis 4 is by first capturing them, and then when we go into this peace screen here, um, we can see that our war score up here is 13%. And then, if we want something in the war deal, we go to demand tribute. If we're losing the war and we want to try to sweeten the deal for them, then we offer tribute. Now, um, if you don't select anything, then it's, it does a what's called a white piece, and that means that nothing happens. You literally, it, it's just peace. And both sides stop fighting, and nothing happens. But if you want to take something, for example, um, first the first tab is seed provinces. And that means that they will give the province to us. So, say we want to take Aragon, we can either click here, or we can just click on the province itself. And if we look here, it's going to list a couple of important stats. First of all, is overextension. Um, overextension is kind of, it's the concept that if you, like, you know, have too much territory that isn't yours, um, and remember how we talked about cores, um, taking cores are not going to cause overextension, but if you take a claim, it is going to cause overextension. Um, and overextension affects national unrest um, in a similar fashion to war exhaustion. Um, generally, you like if on the higher end of overextension, you want to keep it down. Um, anything over seventy-five percent is really like chancy, but anything over a hundred percent is suicidal because the penalties that you get for it are just insane. Um, that being said, 28% um, for that province alone is not very bad. We, can, we could definitely afford that, but notice how our peace offer is a 15% and they have a 13%. If your uh, offer exceeds uh, 15, or if your offer exceeds the war score, rather, um, which in this case is 13, and we're making a uh, demand of 15, um, they're going to be much less likely to accept. For example, if we take that off and we're just going to sign a white piece, we can look here, and they're still not going to accept, and the main reason for that is the length of the war. Um, certain types of wars have different length requirements, and generally speaking, the more exhausted that they get, um, the you know more likely they are to accept any kind of piece, you know, be it that they lose something or not. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the reasons we want to take Barcelona is if you notice in the in the bottom there, it says Aragon holds Barcelona. So, so long as they hold their capital, um, they're going to be a lot more, you know, resilient in, you know, against demands and things of that nature. But if you take their capital, their war exhaustion is going to go up a lot higher, and generally speaking, your war score is going to go up by a significant margin as well. Later in the game, when we pick up the Imperialism Cass's Belly at Diplomatic Technology 22, um, taking the capital becomes the war goal. So, just something to keep in mind. Now, um, lastly, we have a Diplomacy potential cost. So, if we look here at some of our other options here, if we look at release nations, if we wanted them to release the nation of Sardinia, which we may actually ask them to do, um, that's not part of the war goal, because our goal is to just take this territory. Um, in Conquest, Casus Bellies, and Reconquest, um, taking territory um, does not cost diplomatic power, but doing something like releasing a vassal or releasing a nation that doesn't exist um, Sardinia, by the way, is this island right here. Just this one island. So what we, we would be saying that they would have to do is, in this peace agreement, they would give up that province and form the country of Sardinia once again. Calling it a country might be a little bit uh, inaccurate, but... Um, as well, you can force them to cancel vassals, so say we want them to just not have Naples anymore. Well, we can we can do that. We have that option. Or we can tell them to give a core back to a different uh, province. So uh, Roussillon, I would I think that's how that's pronounced. Um, they would give that back to Foix, which is this nation right here. I'm, I'm not the best French uh, pronouncer in the world. As well, and one of the uh, best things that you can really go for, in my opinion, are what's called uh, treaties. And here is where, if you're fighting a smaller country, you can vassalize them. 
Um, you can force them to just concede defeat, which doesn't really do much aside from effect prestige. Um, you can tell them to give up uh, cl claims in France, which might be useful, but it's not really like helpful to us. Uh, especially because we don't like France anyway. Um, you can do what's called humiliating someone, and that's going to give you 30 power projection and make them lose 30 power projection. So to put that into, into perspective, um, we are at 20 power projection. If we humiliated them, we would be at 50. And if we look here at the tooltip for power projection, um, if we have at least 50 power projection, we get plus one monarch points uh, of each category per month. And that's huge. That's amazingly good. So sometimes um, humiliating your opponent can be a lot better strategy um, than taking provinces. Um, even though taking provinces from a rival will also give you power projection. And uh, just a note, you can only humiliate your rivals. And that, that's how that works, since everything related to power projection has to do with rivals. Um, and the last two things, uh, transfer trade power uh, can be helpful. You can make some good money out of it. However, it does cost a diplomatic relations slot. So one of these, um, which may not be the best thing in the world. And someone's messaging me on Steam. Um... Lastly, um, war reparations. Um, this is an art of war specific thing, but it forces the country to give 10% of their income to you each month, which in the case of a big country like France can be really, really good. Um, especially since the war score cost is only 10%, which we actually have. However, because of the length of the war, they still would not be willing to accept that. Um, lastly, if, you, if your peace offer exceeds 100, like 100% war score, they will never accept. It, it is just impossible because you are, frankly, asking for too much at once. So, um, bearing all that in mind, we're going to continue besieging these provinces. Um, try to take Barcelona, Valencia, and Alicante. Since we already have the war goal, we are in a very good position. As well, if they try to take the war goal back, Aragon, um, they will be in the plains. Which means that they're going to, you know, suffer. Alright, we have taken... Valencia successfully, which means that the blockade of Barcelona is now in effect. Our war score has gone up by 4%. Now, you can kind of gauge how much a province is worth um, by this. In the province view, if, by left-clicking on it, you could see that there's a province war score cost. And this is going to affect how much it's going to cost to actually get them to cede it to us. So if we look here... See, yeah, see, Valencia is going to cost 29% because it's not part, or because it is part of the war goal, but it's not the actual goal. Like, we look at Aragon here. Aragon's actually worth 23%, but because it's our official goal, it's going to cost less. So, when you start wars, always think about which province you want to take the most, because that's going to matter when, in the peace agreement, um, if you actually want to take it. Alright, England has announced us as its new rival, um, now that it has lost the Hundred Years' War. Though it still has, uh, this province here. And that one. Calais and, uh, Co. I, I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. Now, Portugal, even despite the war being over, would still not accept, um, and that's because it would destabilize them, and they still like our enemies too much, and their war exhaustion is really, really high. So we're not going to be able to counter uh, Portugal for support, which would be nice, admittedly, but it's not that big of a concern. Now, I believe our troops have fully reinforced at this point, and they have. Um, so our manpower is not uh, declining as much. I still kind of got the sniffles. It's the winter season, you know. Um, Provence, or Provence, wants military access. Who are they at war with? Nobody. I don't see why we should give it to you. Yep, just kind of just waiting for these sieges to end here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and speed the game up a little bit. Now this war is going to be kind of messy because uh, Burgundy is involved in the war, but they're rivaled with France, so there's no way they're ever going to get military access from them. They would have to send uh, troops around on to actually land troops here. Which we covered earlier, but it's worth mentioning once again. However, that's going to be a problem trying to get them to accept a you know separate peace as it were. Um, one last thing I forgot to mention is whenever you're taking provinces, um, and it mentions this in two ways, we'll slow the game down while this is happening, um, 
It shows you how much prestige you get, how much uh, diplomatic power an agreement will cost you, how much uh, aggressive expansion it will give you. Um, generally, anything over 30 or 40 is pretty bad, um, but it depends on who is actually there and what other abilities you might have. And lastly, how much overextension you're going to have. And it says all of this in text form, um, along with a couple of other things like how much inflation you'll get. Because if you demand money in a peace agreement, it'll cause inflation for your country. Because that's money you just got for pummeling someone, basically. Now, they have taken Soria, and because of that, they are going to have um, a little bit more war score. But that's okay, because we still hold the war goal, and we are, you know, close to taking their capital. So we've got them exactly where we want them to be. Now this is unfortunate for us. Granada entered a military alliance with Morocco. So if we try to reconquest, that may, you know, prove difficult for us to engage in like we previously... You know, we, it presumably would have been easy, but because they're in that alliance with Morocco, we're just, you know, kind of screwed. But that's okay because... If you look at these provinces here, it's a 6, a 3, and a 3. So really we're making more gains by doing this, uh, this way. Alright, they have taken the province of Vizcaya, which is unfortunate. Um, but the majority of their army is over here, so we're not particularly worried about that. In this agreement, what we're going to go for is we're going to try to take Valencia and Aragon. That's our that's our goal. So we only need to fight until we have those two provinces, because that's going to uh, severely cripple um, Aragon. Forgot their name for a second. It's late. It's been a long day, but come on, take the province. We'll speed it up a little bit. If we open our diplomatic map mode, we can see we have claims on all three of these provinces now. So we could theoretically take all three of these if we got our war score high enough, but it depends how much we want to fight, because our manpower is at 2,900 out of 29,000. So we are at one-tenth of our potential manpower, which is pretty bad. Alright, this is getting bad. They do have a chance to actually uh, take this territory now. However, we are going to send this, uh, since they just finished the siege on Alicante, we can send our troops over. Now, another thing we could have done is, uh, you know, detached for a siege by pressing D, or just clicking that button. And in this battle is a foregone conclusion. They've only got three uh, stacks there. But we could have just detached troops from uh, to here in Barcelona, and then sent them into Aragon. Now what are we going to do? We're going to send our troops here into Soria. Actually, no. We're going to go offensive. We're going to move our troops into Navarra, and the reason for this is twofold. Um, first of all, we want to vassalize Navarra, since that's going to help us. And we'll do it militarily. Um, we just took Barcelona, which is good. Um, as much as I hate to end it here, um, we will pick this up in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, um, and make sure you tune into the next one, hopefully where we can finish this war and uh, show you how uh, taking territory works. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.